Hey, my name's Ian and welcome back to my channel. And this is my series, my take. Right off of my own take, or perhaps a different take, to events here in New Zealand and throughout the world. Today I'd I thought I'd actually cover the death of George Floyd. Now, we all saw those horrific scenes of what we thought was a ra deliberate racist attack on a black criminal by a white police officer, although there was never any proof that race was the main motivating factor. That was what the media chose to spin globally in the world, just to stoke the fires of people. And of course, it stoked the activists and the wokies up in the world. But here's the, and, and you know, Derek Chauvin got charged and we all saw the, and I'm not going to call them peaceful protests, they weren't peaceful protests, they were rioting, looting, you know, there was assaults, there was, you know, a bit of end of lifing and some arson that went on. And it didn't just happen in America, it was Britain, Australia, New Zealand, anywhere. People were cancelled or harassed if they wanted to offer a different opinion because it was seen as they were pro-cop or they were anti-black, which is kind of stupid, especially given the fact that numerically more white people are actually killed per year in America by the police, which is something that is not often talked about. And certainly you don't see too many people out there going nuts in the streets at the death of, like, you know, white people, like when Tony Timber or Daniel Schaefer were killed by the police. Both of them were unarmed white men who died in similar manners to black people, but there was very, very little, you know, very little coverage, like probably even in America, let alone anywhere else in the world. Like I had to look up who Tony Timber and Daniel Shaver were to find out who they actually were. But yet, everybody knows who George Floyd is. That's how we treat the difference, you see. And it's not hard to stoke the fires up. And there were other false narratives given behind it, like, you know, but for example, you know, when people would mention that, well, actually, the people who take the lives of black people more are fellow black people. Again, you were silenced for actually saying it, even though you were actually accurate for saying it. Just like, for example, a white person's more likely to take the life of a white person. But, you know, you weren't allowed to mention that, you know, a black person might kill a black person more. You know, and, and then, of course, you know, BLM themselves decided to misappropriate the funds. Very little money went to all these families like George Floyd's and Eric Garner's and Breonna Taylor's and everybody else. They turned around and said, say their name, say their name. Most of those families got pretty much nothing from BLM, although... The BLM founders bought themselves nice mansions. And ironically, one of them, Patrice Cullors, guess where she bought a neighbourhood in? That was right. In a secured area, in a white dominant area. She didn't go live in a ghetto with all the other the people. No, no, she decided that she would go and live in an area that was predominantly with white neighbours, and bear in mind, she said a lot of things about white people that she didn't particularly like them or stand them, yet she was willing to vol she voluntarily moved herself there, yeah, you know, because I didn't see her out in the ghetto with a mansion because she knows it would have got robbed like everybody else knows it would have got robbed, you know? But anyway... And there was, there was other footage that was kept from 
most of the public. And that's sort of the route I want to go. A lot of the footage that was actually kept away from the media. Now, for example, you know, when George Floyd was on the ground claiming he couldn't breathe, right? Here's the interesting thing. He was already in the police car screaming before that he couldn't breathe. He resisted arrest. There's a video of him popping a fentanyl tab. All this stuff was conveniently kept away from the public to stoke the fires. And also, it was pretty well kept out of the court case. You know, which therefore defied denied Chauvin the fair right to a hearing. But there were plenty of us out there who knew there was something a bit more suspicious going on. And in the last few weeks, it has come to light that Derek Chauvin's knee on the upper back of George Floyd did not contribute to the death of George Floyd. It was the fentanyl in George Floyd's system that contributed to his death. Also, other things. There's been a new documentary released about the fall of Minneapolis. And the author of it, she has been relentlessly cancelled, harassed and bullied by, obviously, activists in Minnesota about it. But she interviews a lot of the police in Minneapolis. And... This police technique that Derek Chauvin used is apparently a approved police technique, even though the chief of police, or whatever he was, denied it at the time, which therefore stoked more fire and ammunition. Derek Chauvin has been recently stabbed in prison. He's not dead, but he was recently stabbed. Which, of course, to most Wokies and Socialists and BLM supporters out there, they'd probably be actually glad to hear that. Especially the new evidence that, like I said, shows that the death of George Floyd was caused by fentanyl. Now, in normal circumstances, that would be good enough to grant Derek Chauvin, a retrial. But unfortunately, in the current world we live in, being as Derek Chauvin unfortunately is wrong race and wrong sexual orientation and wrong body part between his legs, his chances of actually getting a fair trial are zero. And I'll tell you why, in my honest opinions, why I believe he won't get a fair trial. One, BLM Antifa and any of these other activist groups in the world will go absolutely nuts again and start smashing cities up, assaulting and harassing people, end of lifing a few more people, etc., you know, and they've already pretty much all got slaps on the wrist for it, so now they've got carte blanche to run around cities and just burn them up if they don't like any decision. So we all know BLM and Antifa will go off again like firecrackers, and it won't just be in America. It'll be Britain, Australia, New Zealand, wherever. And the second reason, I believe, why George, why Derek Chauvin won't get a court a retrial, is quite simply paybacks. Revenge for four hundred years of, you know, perceived grievance. You know. It'll, it'll be, he'll be, unfortunately, the scapegoat that pays for every other, for every black person that's ever died at the hands of a white person. He'll be the one that suffers 
for any black person that was enslaved. That's what I believe it is. I believe a lot of it is down to basic petty revenge like that. Because as I said earlier, I stand by my claim that if Derek Chauvin was a black police officer, if he was a female police officer, if he was homosexual or transsexual, any of those sort of groups, or he was a Hispanic, maybe even an Asian, something like that, all the activist groups would jump up and down if they heard all this evidence. They would all be marching on high courts demanding that he was given a retrial. But unfortunately for Derek Chauvin, he happens to be, you know, the most hated group on the on the planet at the moment, which is the white straight male. So unfortunately, sorry, Derek, you kind of pay the price for all of us. Is it fair? No. But I challenge anyone in the comments to actually prove me wrong on it. Because, you know, I reckon we all know that if he was literally a black police officer or he was a female police officer or he was transsexual, like I said, the activist groups would be there ranting and raving, throwing a wobbly, making sure there was a fair hearing for him. You know, but, you know, unfortunately, it's... It's not going to happen for Derek Chauvin. So unfortunately, he just has to accept it. And unfortunately, you know, he will forever be wrongly tarnished as the man who ended George Floyd's life. Even though, like I said earlier, evidence has come to light that it was the fentanyl the drugs in George Floyd's system that did for George Floyd, not Chauvin's questionable policing technique. But, you know, once people, you know, have petty revenge in mind or have hate in their heart, you know, they do whatever they can to make sure they get perceived retribution. You know, he is. He's basically paying the penalty for Breonna Taylor, Eric Garner, Rodney King, Michael Brown, anybody else. He is basically the scapegoat for all of it. But what it ends up doing is, especially with the defunding the police thing, what do you think's happened in these cities that have defunded the police? Shock of shocks, crime has gone up. There's a surprise. You get rid of X percentage of the police force, the crime goes up. So anyway, this, that was a quick take on that. But, you know, I, I and I hope that... I would like to see that Chauvin would get at least a retrial. But as I said, I think if they try and give him a retrial... All the BLMers and Antifans that went nuts in 2020 will just go nuts again. And, you know, might even cause worse damage than they did last time. But, you know, as long as you're activisting or rioting or, you know, looting for the correct reasons, then it seems to be accepted. As sad as that is to say, you know. So anyway, that was my, my take on that. As usual, guys, I look forward to hearing your opinions. But as usual, keep your comments YouTube-friendly and respectful. Bye.